If you're struggling with build a book catalog table for Free Code Camp, you're not alone. This video is going to be for you. We're going to walk through the entire lab exercise and making sure that you understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. This is your very first time on the channel. My name's Rob, I'm with Pre Code Camp, and I'm a coding instructor where I'm trying to take some of the things that are out there that Free Code Camp does and make videos on them on how to complete all their tasks. So with that being said, the best thing that you can do for us to help the YouTube algorithm is take the time, it's free. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and like it. Okay, so we're going to be building something that looks like this. And it does give us a little example here. And it's just a real simple book catalog. It has the title, the author, the genre, the publication year. And then each one of these cells has information in it. So we did something like this in a previous video, previous workshop that Free Code Camp gives us. And so this is just like a test for us to do to make sure that we're all on the same track with keeping track of our table knowledge that we just got done learning. Now, this is broken up into a couple things where we have user stories, but the real thing that Free Code Camp looks at is these tests down here. So every time we add an element on here that fits what this test is testing, then it will go ahead and put a little green check mark on here and it will do an X if we get it incorrect. I was looking over some of this prior to making this video and just like looking at some of the unit tests and based off of the user stories, I am expecting things to fail and we will address those types of failures by taking a look at the unit tests on why we failed it and then what can we do to fix it. So part of developing is knowing what errors they are, how to read them and then how to fix them. So we're gonna go through that definitely in this if we're solely basing it off of the user stories. I'm gonna chapter this stuff out based upon user stories and then maybe at the end, I'll go ahead and chapter it on maybe some of the, the examples on what we failed and how we fixed them later on. Okay, so we do have several tests that need to be ran on here. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so user story number one it says that we should create a table element that lists book information. Now that is very vague, but again, I'm just going to do some of the bare minimums here as far as creating the skeleton outline, and then we're gonna fill it in with some text later. So I'm gonna go ahead and put table in here. And again, keeping things consistent and organized, I'm gonna go ahead and close off the table element right there. Obviously there's gonna be things that go in between, but this should satisfy what number one is really talking about is let's create a table element and that should be good. Let's move on to the next user story. All right, user story number two, it says that the table should have a table head element with one row in it. All right, that should be fairly simple to do. So we're going to do a table head. And so if you remember from the last video or the last lab that they had you do, that they said all tables could have a table head and it's represented with a T head for it. And inside here, it says that it needs to have a single row in it. So we're just going to add a row. And how do you add a row to a table? It's going to be with the TR element. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key a couple times here and do another table row here. But I need to make sure that this is a closing tag. So notice that we're just doing some skeleton outlining. We're not putting any kind of data in it quite yet. That's going to come in the future user stories here. So now it tells us inside here that we need to have these type of headers in here which are the title, the author, the genre, and the publication year. Now, anytime that Free Code Camp gives us this type of information where it's highlighted in gray, you can rest assured that there's going to be a unit test or a test down below looking for these keywords on here. So whenever we're in here doing the table row, I'm going to go ahead and do the skeleton outline. I know that I need four table head types of elements and so I'm just going to do this for the header, right? So I'm gonna do a table header and then I'm going to open and close this. So it's gonna be T and that's what's going to give the bold effect look for the header section. If this was an Excel spreadsheet, this would be the column headers, okay? So I need four of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and make four of these and then we'll resume this video here. All right, now that I have my four, I'm just gonna come over here to make things really easy and make sure that I pass these tests I'm not gonna trust my typing. I'm going to go ahead and paste the stuff in each one of these. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so we can see that we have the four header sections up here being displayed in our HTML. 
browser view of it. And that looks great. I believe that should satisfy user story number three. So we're going to move on to the next user story here. User story number four in building a book catalog table for free code camp. It tells us that the body, the table body element should have at least five rows in it. So this is where we're going to, again, just think about what we did in the previous lab talking about tables is every table can have a head, a body, as well as a footer. And here is our body. So I'm going to go ahead and do a T body, and then I'm going to close that off. Okay. So in between here is where the table rows need to go. And I'm going to do the skeleton outline of this again. So I'm going to do a TR here, close it off. And then it says on here that I believe I need five of these. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to paste it. So that way I get a total of five. Okay. And I believe that satisfies user story number four. User story number five. Now, this is the part that might take a little bit long. And the way that we can speed this up is let's get one table row complete, and then we can copy and paste and apply it. And again, I'm not going to go off of the example that we have here as far as taking each one of these lines and making it match. You definitely can if that's what you'd want to do. But I believe when I was looking at the testing, it's just asking, hey, do we have five table rows? We do. Does each row have four table data sets in them? So that's what it's looking for. So I'm just going to put in some generic data to just pass the test with this. So it says on number five, we need to have a title and author and a genre and a publication year. So Again, I'm just going to put some dummy data in here and I'm going to expand this table row. And it says that we need to have at least four and we're going to call these ones table data elements. Okay. And we want at least four of these in each row. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and I'm going to paste it and one last time paste it. And that will give me my four that I need. Now to make this thing, like I said, a little bit easier, I'm only going to focus on this one. And this is going to be title one. And then the next one is going to be author one and so on. Okay. So let me go ahead and finish this and you can go ahead and see what I have filled in. All right. So this is what I came up with title one, author one, genre one, and then 2015. So I'm going to take this TDs or the table data elements, and I'm going to copy them to my clipboard. Next, I'm going to come down here on each one of these. I'm going to hit the enter key, and then I'm going to paste it. Okay. So let me go ahead and get those done here. Okay. So I've went ahead and I pasted all of them. Again, if you want to change these, you definitely can to change these to twos and make it show up a little bit differently in the tabular view. And that's just to make sure that you do in fact have all five rows that they are talking about. But just notice that as I'm typing this here, that each one of these rows here, that is a row and they all get associated with a one on them. And the next one is twos and the next one's threes and so on. Okay. So again, this would help you make sure that you got them all. And like I said, this should pass the, the testing that they have for this section here. So let me go ahead and finish this up just for consistency. All right. That looks good. I believe that counts for user story number five. Let's go on to the next one. All right, so I went ahead and collapsed the, the table body. We have these little carrots that we can click on and helps me with organization as well as explaining some things as we're going through. However, the next step here, it says, your table should have a table footer element with one row in it, okay? Now, your table is broken up into the head section, it's broken into a body, and then we have a footer. And so the footer element is shortened to T foot, and then we want a closing T foot on here. And then it says that we need one row on here. So we're going to do TR, and then we're going to close off the table row. And that should satisfy user story number six. User story number seven tells us that the row in your table footer element should have a table data element. So we're still using the TDs on here. And it should span four columns and have the text in there called text 
books, colon n, where n is going to be replaced with the number of books that are in your table. Sounds easy enough. So inside our tr, our table row that we just got done creating, we're going to go ahead and put in here a td. And again, I'm just using good practice here while we're learning is make sure that you put a closing tag on here immediately. Otherwise, you might forget about it. Next, inside here, it wants us to put in here the total books, colon n. And then I'm going to replace that n with five because there's five books on there. And then as far as how are we going to handle the span of it, right? And for that, it's going to be an attribute on here, column span. And we want to set that equal to four, I believe is what it wants. So it says, make sure that it spans four columns. So that's what it will look like once we are done. Let's go ahead and run these tests again. I don't know if we did everything correctly. We may see some errors. Let's run these tests. And it says on here, the T head element needs to be within the table element. And let's see where that has gone wrong. All right, I think I see the error. We want to make sure that we put a closing tag on this. So I accidentally did that at the way beginning. Now let's go ahead and run these tests here and see if we missed anything else. All right, perfect. We were able to get that all done. Great. All right. All right. We completed that table lab. Hopefully you ended up getting everything that you needed. And like I said, syntax does matter. Make sure that you use open and closing tags. And the last thing that I'd say that would definitely help you is liking this video and subscribing to our channel because we're going to go through more free code camp lessons and put them up here on YouTube for you guys to watch. All right. Hey, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.